Yeah, so I'm Miriam um, and I met Jess when we rode across the Atlantic Ocean about two years ago now it was. Yeah. Um, so I rode across solo and Jess rode across as a four and then afterwards we were kind of twiddling our thumbs and got a bit bored with land life and figured we needed a bigger challenge. It was previously called the Talisker Whiskey Atlantic Challenge. It's yeah. now been renamed the World's Toughest Row. And okay. it's a race that happens every year, about 40 boats mm -hmm. from Lagomera in the Canary Islands to Antigua in the Caribbean. So um, it's, it's becoming quite popular actually. Um, and you can race uh, either as a solo pair, trio, four or five. Um, but the crossing that we're doing across the Pacific is a completely independent expedition and it's not an organised race at all. <laughs> yeah, we've, um, we've done a load of our YA courses, so that's uh, essential navigation, first aid, VHF radio, mm. uh, sea survival. We've also gone and done hydraulics courses, electronics courses, further first aid. We spent lots of time getting to know our boat really well and doing uh, on water training back in the UK before our boat was shipped here. Um, it has been non-stop outside of our full-time jobs. Oh, so this is looking at Hartley Pool on the North Sea. Um, I thought really you were enjoying it. It was cold up there, wasn't it? <laughs> and we actually had no mattresses for for the first half of our training. We were just on really thin camping mats. So we're, we're really excited we've got proper mattresses for the Pacific. Huh. Um, and we used to see, we used to see a seal in, in the same spot every time we'd go out and we called him, we've called him Alan. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, I've got a couple more clips I'll play here, but I wanna ask a question because we've, we've been lucky enough to host a few people who have made uh, various crossings and there's mm -hmm. kind of different techniques. Uh, obviously, you've chosen to train and prepare a little bit, and I know there's some who just decide just to go out and kind of get their body in shape as they're going. So I'm wondering, you know, why why you thought the training was important uh, for this one? I think mostly um, to prevent injury and, and you know, be as strong as possible. Um, we've been trying to put on a, a load of muscle uh, before going because we know that we're going to lose quite a lot of weight mm -hmm. um, we've been doing a lot of hours on the rowing machine in the gym and also lots of weight training um, so it's really just trying to prepare your body for sitting in the same position and just you know the same movement day in day out because we won't actually be standing up really other than moving from the rowing seat to the cabin so you kind of lose your calf muscles and um, stepping on land after our Atlantic row. Um, it, it took about a week to, to get used to being on land again. And, mm. you know, certain parts of your body do hurt a bit. Yeah, I think, um, I think it would probably been easier to row here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of bureaucracy improving custom. So this day was just, oh, it was incredible. We'd waited about 12 days for the boat to arrive and been on meetings every day with customs and the British ambassador was helping and yeah, the war was going on. <laughs> it's definitely been tricky and um, our food also arrived in a separate container yesterday um, after it had been here for three weeks. So we were pretty worried all of our chocolate will have melted being, you know, <laughs> sat in the sunshine um, in, in its container. But thankfully, it does all seem OK. Yeah, we're going to be on about 5,000 calories a day. Um, so 3,000 of those calories are going to be split into three 1,000 calorie ration packs. So um, I don't know if anybody knows, but they're expedition food, so it's mainly dehydrated. You top it up with some hot water, let it rehydrate and then start eating it. And then the snack packs are more normal things like you get at home. So maybe protein bars, fruit and nut mixes, um, some chocolate, some biscuits. Um, it's actually really hard to get the calories in. So some of it doesn't seem the healthiest, but it's just a case of getting calories in because we're having the amount of snacks that you would have as your daily calorie intake. 
um, uh, it does get quite hard when you're rowing and it's quite hard to digest when you don't get a lot of break to digest everything. So um, yeah, we'll certainly miss some fresh food, won't we? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think we'll try and we'll try and take as much fruit as we can for the first week on the boat um, as a treat if we can fit it on board. <laughs> Yeah, so we have got a desalinator on the boat, um, so it's mounted inside one of the deck hatches and it pulls in seawater through the central uh, through hole of the boat and it makes about 30 litres of, of drinking water per hour. Um, we've also got, if that goes wrong, we've got a spare pump so we can fix it. We've also got a hand pumping uh, water maker desalinator as well. And as another backup, we will take a few bottles of emergency drinking water. Yeah, so you can see that's the deck, that's the bow cabin that we're looking at now. The bow cabin can actually fit our oars in, it's over three meters long. Um, and then uh, at the back, the blue cabin is the stern cabin, which is probably the one that this one here that we'll be uh, swapping in and out of. Um, mm -hmm. You can sleep in both. There'll be mattresses in both. But in the stern cabin, which is the back cabin, that's where all of the navigation equipment will be. The radio, the chart plotter, everything that you need to know exactly where you're going and to route plan. Um, also the batteries, the lithium batteries are kept in there which are uh, powered by the solar panels, which you can see the big black squares on the top of the cabins. Um, so we'll probably do a rolling shift pattern. Ideally, we'd always have one of us on the oars keeping the boat moving forward. Um, so switching out of the, the stern navigation cabin for route planning is essential. Uh, Paddington in Peru, oh, that's our team mascot. <laughs> so um, that was given to us by my dad, who's actually out here helping us. And it's it's just quite fitting having Paddington from Peru being based out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Perfect mascot to have leaving from Peru with you uh, to kind of help <laughs> you along that journey. That's great. We're just trying to figure out whether we keep Peru uh, Paddington outside um, and cable tie him on or we put him in the cabin. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess it depends what you want Paddington to look like at, at the end of the, yeah. <laughs> the journey. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, we're, we're probably going to have a little send off party a couple of days uh, before we leave. Um, we've made so many friends out here and mm. we've been so lucky with how how much help everybody's given us. Um, and then I think there's going to be quite a lot of boats sailing out or motoring out with us as we leave. There's a little island um, about four kilometers away. So they'll probably come up to that point, depending on how, how slow we are with all of our food on the boat. Um, yeah. yeah, it's going to be a nice send off. Mm. 